So a lot of people who get into weightlifting are powerlifters. They have a good strength base, their squatting strength is good, pulling strength is also good. So surely they'll be at an advantage when it comes to learning weightlifting, right? Unfortunately not. It might actually be a hindrance coming from powerlifting. So why is it that most powerlifters struggle to learn the snatch and clean jerk? In this video, I'll go over a couple of reasons why they struggle. But before we get into that, there's now a Black Friday sale on all programs on my website where you can get 30% off. There's beginner programs, complete weightlifting and powerlifting programs, and a squat program. Link will be in the description and pinned comment on this video. So the strength powerlifters have doesn't matter that much. Upper body strength from powerlifting doesn't carry over to the weightlifting movements. Powerlifters have good upper body strength from benching and doing accessories to improve their bench, but they might have performed strict presses and push presses with bad form. This can develop bad motor patterns, which hinders their ability to learn proper form with the jerk and snatch and related exercises. Also, they probably performed all their pressing movements without a strong and fast lockout like seen in the snatch and clean and jerk. So their ability to perform a strong lockout is hindered. This is by far the most common problem I see. They might have a large strict press with bodybuilder or powerlifting style technique, but they might struggle with exercises such as behind the neck, snatch grip, press, and push press with weightlifting style form because those exercises require you to put the bar into different positions which might be weak for a powerlifter. So powerlifters will have to relearn all these pressing movements. A big deadlift doesn't mean much. Powerlifters lack the motor skills and strength to perform snatch and clean pulls. Also from doing a lot of conventional powerlifting style deadlifts, they learn to pull with a rounded upper back, which isn't ideal for weightlifting. When I gave Hayden a weightlifting program, I made him do snatch deadlifts at 95 kilos, even though at the time he could deadlift triple that amount. This was so that he could actually learn the movement because the snatch deadlift and clean deadlift are very different exercises compared to the powerlifting style deadlift. A big back squat doesn't mean much. The difference between a powerlifter's back squat and front squat might be large. For example, they might have a 200 kilo back squat, but their ATG raw front squat might only be 120 kilos. Front squat strength is a better indicator of clean and jerk or weightlifting potential than back squat strength. So they might lack the mobility and motor skills to perform a full depth weightlifting style squat, and they might have never even learned the Olympic style squat. They may have poor mobility or too much muscle mass. They might lack the ability to rack the bar or catch the bar in a good overhead position. Believe it or not, having too much muscle mass, especially around your arms, can reduce your ability to rack the bar and lock the bar overhead. Performance in the snatch and clean and jerk can actually improve with a reduction of muscle mass around the arms. Imagine peak Larry wheels trying to rack the bar for the clean. Basically impossible. And lastly, ego. Because of their huge strength base, they might rely on their strength to progress rather than focusing on improving their technique. Mentally, it's very hard to go from deadlifting 200 kilos to lifting a PVC pipe. So maybe I'm being too hard on powerlifters, but these are just problems powerlifters will face when they transition to weightlifting. Of course, I'm not saying all powerlifters will face these problems. For example, female powerlifters will generally have an easier time transitioning. Also, I'm not saying there's only disadvantages. As a powerlifter, you'd be much stronger than the average person starting Olympic lifting. 
so that's a big advantage. However, it's important not to get carried away with this and underestimate the difficulty of weightlifting. So a solution to the problems I mentioned is really just be patient. If your squat is 200 kilos, that means you have the potential to clean and jerk at least 140 kilos, but that doesn't mean you can automatically do that weight with little training. It might take years to clean and jerk 140 kilos. The first couple of months learning weightlifting as a powerlifter will really feel like cardio and it'll be boring. This is because you'd be lifting very light weights relative to your max squat, bench and deadlift. If you can deadlift 600 pounds, that doesn't mean the first session you can start with a heavier weight compared to someone who has never done weight training before. If Larry Wheels wanted to learn how to snatch, he would have to start with the drills with a PVC pipe like everyone else. He wouldn't start by snatching 100 kilos because he's so strong. When you start doing exercises like snatch pulls, you shouldn't pick a large weight just because you have a lot of pulling strength. As a powerlifter, you should imagine you're someone who has never done any weight training before and imagine you don't have a huge back squat, bench or deadlift. Some people who come from powerlifting find it ridiculous that they have to snatch weights like 30 kilos for a couple of weeks, but that is necessary when you learn the Olympic lifts. Sure, you can probably do a muscle snatch with 70 kilos with bad form, but that's not good for learning the Olympic lifts at all. So just being patient is the biggest thing. As for other things powerlifters need to focus on, they should focus more on front squats and lifting raw since their back squats are probably much stronger. They should do upper body exercises related to weightlifting, not to improve their upper body strength, but to familiarize themselves with the movements and different positions. They should do exercises like behind the neck snatch grip press, snatch balance and push press with weightlifting style form and focus on a strong and fast lockout because that isn't focused on in powerlifting. They should train more frequently if they weren't already. High frequency training for weightlifting is very important. Training five to six times per week is best. With powerlifting, you can get away with training three times a week. This certainly isn't enough to make meaningful progress with weightlifting. They should stop caring about strength. People always ask me if it's possible to do some squats or other strength exercises on the side while learning the Olympic lifts. It's pointless because all you'd be doing is taking time away from learning the snatch and clean and jerk to maintain your strength at best. What is the point of maintaining your back squat at 200 kilos if you can't get into the bottom position of a snatch? If you're coming from powerlifting, you have already been building strength for months or years. Focusing 100% of your time on the snatch and clean and jerk and related exercises for months or years will do no harm to your strength levels. If your back squat is 200 kilos, you shouldn't worry about increasing your back squat until you can clean and jerk 150 kilos. If you made the decision to transition to weightlifting, then why care about your powerlifting numbers? What you should care about is your progression with the snatch and clean and jerk.